first of all, I, I think it's it's wonderful to have reached 15 years with the IAAC, and I, I was saying to some of the journalists before that it doesn't really feel like an honor for us. It feels like we're all here to honor um, Arun and her team for having come this far and done so much. And that's the good news, and this is good news. Tell us about what's going on tonight. Oh, we, the IAAC, the Indo-American Arts Council, has turned 15. It's 15 years since we opened our doors, since we decided to give Indian artists in the United States a platform. That's Indian Americans in performing arts, visual arts, and literary arts. And today we're here, we're 15 years old. You know, I, I've been very fortunate because I worked with the Indian community for 27 years. Oh, you have? And uh, I one time brought Ritu Nanda, uh, Raj Kapoor's daughter, to America. Okay, so I know a little bit about the Joker and about the arts of India, which are not little, are big time. Bollywood is serious stuff, right? And so you're sharing that here in America? Well, it's not only Bollywood. Bollywood doesn't need me. It's the independent filmmakers, the dancers, the musicians, all the other people in the arts. Because Bollywood has got their own platform, they really don't need me. All right, what's good news for you? Good news for me is that all these other artists have got platforms now, and people can pronounce their names without saying come again. <laughs> great craft of cinema and to honor the handmade. There is a saying in India, Dhobi ka kutta na ghar ka na ghat ka, which literally means a washerman's dog who is neither at home on the street or at home, or but is at home everywhere. And in the years of making films, and I must thank Arun for giving many Dhobi ka kuttas adda like IAAC because here we all are. I really felt like that washerman's dog, uh, not really understood at home, considered a novelty abroad, but at home everywhere. And I wanted to share with you some lessons that I learned of those days, uh, and these lessons continue, uh, to prize one's own intuition, to persist in creating what makes one distinct, and especially to seek courage from rejection. For me, it is important really to always do what I think I cannot do rather than do the things I know I can do. Uh, safety and calm and dosas and chutney in family life, but bravery in work. And I am a systematic dreamer. You have to dream, you have a vision, then work out a plan to systematically achieve it and get all the lafangas in the world to help me to get there. But the key is to continue to be brave and to sometimes to know that one has to be lonely for that bravery and to cultivate stamina because to think beyond yourself and in this award obsessed culture to think beyond reward. The real blessing in my life are what the Jains call the passage makers, the ones who enable you to make your way in the journey of life. I am so blessed to have had a few in my life people who tell me the truth and who bring to life my crazy ideas. These are the real riches. This is the real treasure of my life. One of the things that I was most proud of and remain most proud of in my writing is the way in which people from India, Pakistan have related to it. Um, sometimes very touchingly and sometimes more, more with more comedy. And I remember a young man coming up to me in India at the time, well, I was young then, uh, coming up to me in India when the book came out and he said, you know, I could have written that book, I know all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I just decided to take that as a compliment. Um, there's a Goan journalist who interviewed me and brought along to the interview a first chapter of a novel that he had been writing which was about a boy born in Goa at the exact moment of independence. And he said, you know, all that happened is you finished your book first. He said, he said well, now, now I can't write my book because you wrote it. Shame on you, exactly. All I get to do is interview you. <laughs> so, yeah, these are the, I guess, the problems of success. <laughs> um, but I do think that what I have remained very proud of is that the people, in, people about whom many of these books are written find them to be truthful and valuable because 
you know, that's a much bigger prize uh, than 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 a, you know, than, than, a, than a check or a, or, or, a, or a formal prize. The real prizes of literature are those. Um, and I'm also very proud of the fact that there are so many people, you know, following in the footsteps. I mean, I, I remember back in '81 when Midnight Children came out that. Indian writing in English was a kind of small, slightly impoverished um, subsection of Indian literature. And what's happened in the 30 years since then is that, of course, there's been this great explosion, uh, both in the literature of India itself, Indian literature in English in India, and in the literature of the Indian diaspora. Uh, much of that here, many, many wonderful writers um, emerging in this country uh, and in other countries of the diaspora. Um, and having the courage, I think, finally, to treat subjects which are not only limited to the experience of the Indian community, but having the courage to take on the culture, the larger culture, the culture as a whole, which is in a way what Mira has done with her films too, both to write about, both to make films about India and about the larger subject of the culture. And I think that's been very heartening to see that happening in, in, in literature as well. And Golden Globe Hall of Fame award winning songwriter Mr. Paul Williams. Along with Grammy nominated, Oscar nominated pianist and composer Mr. Kenneth Asher. Please welcome them. We won't have just begun, which I wrote in 1970. In the same room with Salman Rushdie, who is the essence of courage and passion. And I don't give a damn, I'm going to tell you the truth. It's an honor to be here with you, sir, and to be singing with you, Sidney Brown. Oh, <laughs> 